Okay, officially calling the meeting to order. Um, do we have um, any public input, Delene? No, we do not. Okay, so uh, we have one. Wait, hold on have... one second. Okay, we have. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Jeff. I'm going to move him over. So, so he's not public. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know if uh, folks had a chance to go over the meeting minutes from September 24th. Are there any corrections or do we move to approve as as is? I've looked them over and I motion to approve as is. I didn't see anything, but I don't usually catch the stuff you guys catch because I kind of skim over them. I didn't see anything. Okay. All right. So then um, uh, we move to approve the minutes. And the next thing is our calendar, Sarah. Well, we got the October one too. Yeah, we have the October minutes. Oh, we have the October minutes, September, October. We were just behind on one. Yes. I read over both of those. I didn't see anything glaring in either of them. Do we move to approve the October minutes as well? I think so. I yes. A, a rich Peter question. <laughs> I, I did read through them. I didn't see anything in error. So okay. Motion to okay. Approve. Awesome. Awesome. So both September and October are approved. And then the um, schedule for the meetings in, I guess, 2024 into 2025. Whatever you want. If I can make them, I great. If I can't, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to read out the dates, Erica? Um, yeah, I think you just had that one question about the 24th. I just wanted to get it on record. Yes. So for this year, the next Tree Advisory Committee meeting is scheduled in December for the 24th, which is Christmas Eve. So I wanted to ask the committee if you'd like to cancel that meeting so we can put out a notice. Yep. So I move to cancel that mo that meeting. We're not going to be there, correct? Cancel it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's unanimous. <laughs> All right. And then other than, um, than that meeting, I think we usually don't have a July meeting. Is that correct, guys? Correct. Yeah. So if I don't know if we can say now that we won't have a July 25 meeting. And then what yes. about December of yes. next year? Probably they open and soon. Yeah, I would say that we're not gonna we're we're not gonna meet December. Yeah, I, I don't know about July. I mean, I, I think that leave it on we the, haven't been. That's the only reason why I brought it up. I just what? you know, two months may be long enough where if we're around, it's great. If we cancel it ad hoc, we cancel it ad hoc. I'd rather leave it sort of like if no one's around, then it's, it doesn't meet a quorum. That's okay. But one of the things stuff too, to discuss. One of the things with the July meeting too is it's setting up the planting locations and stuff for September because then the August twenty sixth meeting would be the next one. So really, you don't have much time left to plan for what you're going to do for the remainder of the season. So the July meeting is sometimes important for just laying out what you're going to do and where we're going to do it. Yeah, Paul, I'm not challenging that or disputing that. I'm just saying that every year for as long as I can remember, we've not had a July meeting. So I was just trying to be efficient since um, we were discussing the calendar. But if you want to leave, put July back on the calendar, literally and figuratively, let's go for it. And like Peter said, if we don't have anything to discuss, we can always cancel it. And, and even if it's just not a quorum, it still keeps the process moving. Sure, sure, that's fine, that's fine. So we'll just we'll just do December for now. Fair. Okay. All right. Awesome. So, Sarah, do you want to talk to us about the capital grant funding for the tree planting program? <laughs> Paul, do we need formal approval of the calendar? Do we need like a motion to approve on that or am I good to go? 
No, we do. We'll need a motion. Thank you. Julie. Okay. So <laughs> a motion to approve no December, 2024, no December, 2025, but we are going to keep July, 2025. Anybody second? <laughs> second. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. <laughs> Thank right. you. Um, all right. So updates for the tree planting program. Um, we planted about 230 trees. We might get a couple more. Um, this morning I was over at the condominium um, on 15 Madison uh, where we were planting I believe 15 trees for Sonia. She gathered a bunch of her residents so we were able to plant um, in people's privately owned yards as well. Um, and it sounds like there's a couple more folks there that would like more trees. So we will try to get those in the ground this week. Um, but that brings our final count for the calendar year of 2024. 450 trees, plus or minus, um, will have been planted this calendar year. Um, so last year, I believe we got around 500, maybe breached it. The year before, we were around there too, Paul. I, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it was 521 but, last year, yeah. So we're doing good. We're in, in the same ballpark. Yes. Important to note, though, um, as of this planting season, we will have expended all of the ARPA planting funding that was available. Um, so that's great. We used every penny we could. <laughs> um, but that was a very large source of funding for us to be able to plant citywide. Um, starting in spring 2025, based on what capital funding and the ARPA funding that was used for this fall season, um, our primary funding source is going to be the grant money for the MLK corridor, so that can only be spent within that corridor area, and the new funding from the Inflation Reduction Act grant that we received, the million dollars. Um, and so with that being said, for the spring season, we'll have to focus our plantings due to that funding availability, mostly in South Norwalk in these disadvantaged environmental justice areas, the MLK corridor, um, almost entirely in South Norwalk. So um, Erica had sent me an example of a postcard that I believe was from Stanford, um, where they kind of created this campaign, Erica, correct me if I'm wrong, um, for specific neighborhoods to request a tree, but I, presumably they only had funding for certain areas. And so I thought that might be a really good idea um, to do some kind of advertisement like that to entice people in South Norwalk where the right of way might only be a sidewalk. There might no, not be any grass strip or snow shelf. Um, really entice people to, to know about the program and hopefully request more trees for, for front yard or you know street facing yard space. Um, well, one, over here, one of my students had put that together um, she lives in Stanford and somebody who was on a similar committee asked her if she would put together a brochure since she was good in this particular program. And, um, and I think for us, you know, maybe having it in English and then translating it into Spanish and, um, distributing them, I think would be a great way for people to, as you mentioned, know about us in the program, but also give them a venue to be able to request a tree. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Water Street um, really floods a lot. And I had no idea how much it floods. Um, uh, every time we have any kind of a moon shift, it, it floods. It's without rain. <laughs> Like so for years, people, yes. Well, then we, that's a perfect area for us to target for trees. Then I didn't know about this. Yeah, I just, I have of, some. <laughs> a lot of trees fail there, so it's it's a very tough well, area. But yeah, we we've, we've really looked at areas there in the past, and the problem is, is that the only place we could put them, allowing for the sidewalk space, would be on private properties. So, for example, we tried to do some work down at the marinas a few years ago behind the fence. And what they said is if I put a tree in, you're taking out my space to store boats, which I get paid for. So some of the areas have been tough to get them to do it. 
No, you definitely don't want trees over there by the marina because it's it's not going to take up a whole lot of space for a boat. But what it is going to do is put a lot of debris on people's boats. Um, but there's space across the street from those marinas that we could look at to put trees in. I mean, I was just blown away how flooded that street was when it was not raining just because we had a blue moon or a, a, a king's moon and all of these different things. And it was just literally flooded up into those parking lots. Well, I mean, the trees aren't necessarily going to take that saturation, but the trees have to be able to survive that saturation. So, so I'm going to suggest, so, so I think, I think there's, I think there, there's a strategic piece here that advances brochures and outreach, because what we found in South Norwalk is that many of those properties are not owner occupied. So first of all, going around asking people you want a tree or not may not get us to our goal. We need to know where we want the trees and how to strategically go after the property owners to get them there. The area that I'm talking about, these are not private houses that are being rented out. These are actual buildings that are there. Some of them are businesses and some of them are high-end uh, building facilities that are right there on Water Street with, you know, the water and the marina as their view. I mean, I can't remember the name of the building right now, but one of my friends lives in that building. And um, it's definitely in South Norwalk and would fall under the MLK corridor, you know, project probably. But yeah. it's it we would talk to the building management to try to get some something planted there. And I mean, I agree, it's not gonna solve the problem overnight, but once they establish and come more mature trees, I don't foresee having that kind of flooding. And Rich, I know you put trees in a lot of places that have kind of brackish water flooding onto it and have a couple of ideas. I can't remember the names of the trees that you've used in the past. We did out on, uh... Sprite Island, and we tried three or four different varieties, one of which was linden. They didn't do very well, but oh. the linden plain and the honey locust that we put out there, and they get flooded all the time, are still doing well. So, so we're thinking that there is a work session with us that says, where are the targeted places that include North Water Street? I mean, we had done that with Woodward Avenue 10 years ago, Paul. Yeah. with some you know disadvantaged communities financing or grant proposals and we ran into trouble we just couldn't have access to the properties but i think as a group we can do a work session that says what are our targets and how far do we think a million dollars is going to go mm -hmm. and strategize how we get it on those locations can the can the tree alliance be part of that because sorry we plant on private property um and we've kind of ran into the similar roadblocks as you have um just mentioned um but we have we have planted on water street um but it only went so far because a lot of them were marinas and they didn't want the debris like erica said so yeah. how much um, money but, do you have jeff yeah we have enough <laughs> so and then wherever, you have you, I, you have you i was just gonna oh. say you know from a messaging standpoint you know if we just wherever we can help on private property that's our that's where we plant so um not to cross efforts but let's let, you know let's work together and duplicate not duplicate our efforts but work together strengthen no absolutely i did this idea of a work session is probably a good hardest. idea I mean, yeah. and you have, you, you, I mean put so you have to push because we're, we're busy so you got to push <laughs> thank you for permission. january february are not necessarily <laughs> not busy times either for us so yeah but but you you do have to push and set something up because I, I think that the sort of ad hoc approach may not get us in South Norwalk where we want to go. Mm -hmm. And and our money is not necessarily tied up to to grants, so yeah. you know that's that's our advantage. Or freedom, um, yeah, yeah. Awesome, uh, Peter and Rich. Do you guys have experience using like structural soils for areas like this that experience? a lot inundation or because those trees on water street i, I think 70 percent have been lost at this point um well it, right? it, well the structural swells are about about compaction mm -hmm. so you you may need more pore soil so you can 
can drench them less asphalt. And that may be a different issue. So structure is about compaction for building new walks. So yes, we have experience with that. Um, two is just how do you get enough soil in the ground, which no one cares to pay for. <laughs> yeah. It's in, there in, already, in, right, Peter? <laughs> but but post-Katrina, post -Katrina, it was about how do you deal with the salt entrenched soils that can't support ornamental trees? And I think there we used a, I can't think of what we used to extract the soil soften the soil. Different issue, but actually not that different, quite frankly. One thing I can add, too, that we we're doing, too, while we're under the funding category, uh, and Sarah had mentioned uh, the issues that we're having. So this year, we're going to be putting more money into the capital budget request for the rest of the city, like we've done other years, but we'd ask for a little bit more because we've got South Norwalk covered, but the rest of the city, we're going to need more money to be able to do stuff. And that money for the capital budget would be ready. Whatever we got approved would be ready after July 1st. So it would be fall of next year. Very cool. So how have um, Minutemen and Olmstead, um, Olmstead been doing with the watering? They, uh, they actually came by my house and took um uh the uh tree gators and um they were mine so <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and I'm like where's okay. my tree gator <laughs> and then I looked at the camera and I saw them, them. <laughs> gonna be repurposed on a tree somewhere else in the world. <laughs> it'll be returned next year well, I will contact them about that <laughs> that's the cool one they should only be taking the ones that they install, definitely. I guess, how do you know? But <laughs> they should have their branding on it. Um, <laughs> Minutemen, um, for the month of October through November, they did uh, let me know that they did um, water during that time. And then Almstead, same thing. Early, mid-October, they were watering, so... They did I mean, everybody had to be watering them. so much. I mean, this has just been crazy with this drought. Terrible. Yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, I had my irrigation system shut down in October like I normally do. And then I ended up watering for weeks with a hose. <laughs> um, okay. Um, any updates with tree liaisons? Um, just to say that, so last week was the conclusion of me meeting with residents and staking out trees. Mm -hmm. And um, that last meeting contributed to an overall number of 42 trees being planted for our residents. Awesome. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah okay. that's great. That's a lot. That's a lot for... <laughs> Awesome. Jeff, any um, NTA activities? I saw something about pie. Yep. Yep. Um, so <laughs> this Sunday. 3.14. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this Sunday, December 1st, Porter Farm, um, we're having an open house, um, 4.30 to 6. Um, so we warmly extend that invitation to you all. Um, hope to see you all there. We'll be having pie and serving pie and um, light drinks and, uh, you know, just a good time to hang out and catch up before the holidays. Um, so hopefully we see you all there. Um, That's and so then we're just continuing planting. So, um, you know, I have to get, um, Paul, the numbers for the year. Um, so we're working on that, but we have about 80 trees in the ground this year. We have to finalize that number. Um, so just congratulations to, the tree alliance and um continuing to get trees in the ground and um gay we may have one more for you um we should catch up on that and we can get that make that 42 number 43 for you right um and then um yeah we're just looking forward to 2025 um we have a lot of exciting ideas on how and where to get more trees in the ground um throughout norwalk um and additionally we're just excited to continue to lean into the Alliance part of our name. Um, and we look forward to working and continuing working with you, the TAC and uh, other tree planting groups um, to continue getting trees in the ground in Norwalk and uh, throughout Norwalk, throughout the city of Norwalk to better our tree canopy. So have a lot to look forward to and uh, we'll just continue, continue talking. 
Sounds right. good. Sounds good. Is right. there any other business? <laughs> you know what I'll bring up. Uh, it's a loaded question. I should you just know what I'll bring up. <laughs> Wall Street, please. Mr. Chris, why is there no tree protections on my trees out there? <laughs> Earth to Chris. Earth to Chris. Question. Yeah. Question. I don't want to hear that they're going to be replaced two years from now. Anything? I don't want to hear it. Why is there no tree protection on those two ginkgos out there? They're supposed to pull a permit that says you're supposed to protect trees. So something's wrong in the system. That's I, my story. I'm sticking to it. Tell me I'm wrong. You're not wrong. They, they're not protected. They should be, though. They're not. Didn't you read my emails? I'm not going to lie, no. Okay. They need to be protected. They have machinery working out there right now. Those trees are inside the construction fence. They should be outside of it. Okay. I'll call Bill tomorrow. Thank you. Should I mention them? Are right. they done? Is, I that, one more... is that it for other business? No, <laughs> no, I'm one more piece. I was waiting to see if that was done between the two of them. Um, so this is really easy. Um, I'd like us to explore adding this tree to the list of trees to be considered for next year. It would be the black cherry. It's a native. Um, it matures to 80 feet. Um, it hosts many species of butterflies and moths and birds. Um, it's adaptable to most different, different types of soils. Um, so I've been studying up about it. So if we could consider that and see, and give me your thoughts on that. We would have to uh, just talk with Olmstead because the current contract, it's not in it, but we would uh, see if we can get a price if we have locations right. for them. We'd have to get a price for them to see what they we do because it would technically be like a change. What order. tree type was that? I'm sorry, I missed that. Black cherry. Black oh, cherry. okay, sure, sure. Black cherry. So it's a great native. It's tardy. Um, I'm sure it is Saratina, right? Or Saratina, as as one of my my botany friends would call it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> awesome. It's beautiful tree. That would be really cool. We'll see how much it costs. And it's available. I think yeah, we can talk with Gary, right, Sarah? We'll talk with Gary. So the thing about black cherry is it's more of like a naturalized species. So when it comes down to the species list that we're using for the city's tree planting program, I kind of put it in the same category as like black walnut in terms of if we're going to spend the funding on a tree that is supposed to be great for canopy. A lot of the areas that we're planting in are more urbanized areas that wouldn't be so great for planting black cherry. I don't know what the cost benefit of that is. And I, I feel like Peter could, could add to that. It's more of a natural species. It's probably not the easiest to find in nurseries and certainly not, not in like a specimen I mean, quality. If we were going to spend effort, hickory would be better. I mean, black cherries are, I don't think you can even get them in the trade. That's the main. Uh, but I, I, I've never been able to buy them. Well, I find the them. The availability is going to be a challenge on those. I find them more in naturalized wooded areas as well. I mean, sometimes you can get them in um, from from naturalizing nurseries, but right. you know they're and they're. I don't mind them when they're old, but they're they're kind of not ornamental trees, so no one grows them. Okay, so they'd probably be pretty expensive then. No, they're not available. Not available you can, at you all. Them, you okay. can get them as whips, you know, one inch whips for, for lining out in, in native, in, in reforestations, but you're not going to get them for an ornamental tree. Well, um, Paul, make a phone call, right? That's, it's well, that's easy scary. enough. It's easy enough to uh, find out. I, I can check. Yeah, it's not. A or Sarah. Yeah, that sorry. That I'm, I'm, that's yeah. actually yeah, more Sarah's venue. Sorry. It's just because Paul was the one answering. Um, <laughs> it's not that we shouldn't plant them. It's more. Is it appropriate for the contract, I guess? And, and can they find them? So I, I can check with Gary, but I'd also lean on on you guys in terms of. Is it the right place for. Right tree, there? right place. There you go, Jeff. <laughs> well, what about parks and stuff like that and cemeteries and churchyards? And because that's one? a little bit more suitable to it. Would that be a better fit if we can find them? Which, which one's in the air? What about parks 
or um, cemeteries or parks, churches, parks or I'm sorry. more an area that's a little bit suitable. They seem to be very hardy. Any thoughts, Peter or Rich? I think it's going to come down to the availability. Just run it by Gary and Minuteman and see what they can, if they can procure them. The, 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 and if the, so, the, how much? And then we make a decision from there. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. I mean, I'm even, it's just any, any reforestation, they tend to work, but they're thrown in as whips and then they're forgotten about and some survive because they're, they're pretty durable. <laughs> I mean, we've we've even tried to regrow sort of you know shag bark hickories over in Gettysburg, and we had to collect things and and put them in seeds, three seeds in a three seeds in a in a in a pit, and see if, which one grew. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I mean, those are native carriers are very hard to get commercially, and they'd 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 be my preference in parks above black cherry, mm -hmm. in terms of like you know park trees and and school grounds. I can also okay. check with the land trust um, or the NRWA and see if they have a source if they they plant them. They might they might be taking or have them um, in land that they're trying to clear when they when they repot like the little saplings. Um, that might be a, a, a source, but it's not going to be anything like immediately impactful, obviously. But over the over the years, maybe plan for it. I mean, it's um, I like to see more of those things, but it's hard. Thank you, Jay. Uh <laughs> All right, guys. So I move to adjourn. I made I enough think trouble. Richard Peter you. have to second. I, I'm, yeah. I'm second, and I, I made enough trouble tonight. <laughs> Peter, it's what we love about you. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I spent all, I, I laid out 80 trees this morning in Torrington. I'm a little wiped, <laughs> and I'm worried about I'm worried about temperatures dropping below freezing up there. They are yeah. about 10 degrees different. Yeah, the project we started late, and um, I am concerned. But we did get standard service berries. Single stem, Fingers single crossed. stem. Yeah. Yes, those pictures look good. Thanks for sharing those. Well, we, we, we don't realize we can get them. We can get them. Mm -hmm. Where did you find them? Uh, uh, what's the uh, nursery in West Southern? Southern. What was the last dam? It's on the Massachusetts border up there, West Suffield. It's a wholesale yard. He brings them in. But normally they're, they're always multi-stem. We're we're changing changing the trade. We need we need single stems. Yeah, Almstead was able to source me three single stem service berries. And they they can get them if you keep more. asking. Yeah. On, on Martin on Martin Luther King, when we put in the multi stems, they should have been single stem. It would have made a big difference. Happy Thanksgiving, oh, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy holidays. Bye. Yep, wishing everybody, everybody an awesome, awesome here. family time. <laughs> Same. And see everyone Sunday, hopefully. All right. I fun. think I just <laughs> need somebody to second my adjournment. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we Happy have to be official. <laughs>